This lesson is going to be about heat of combustion and molar heat of combustion. Um, and just to review in terms of what heat of combustion is, heat of combustion is usually when you have some sort of fuel, um, or specifically a petroleum product of some sort, in which reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So whenever we're talking about any sort of combustion reactions, we have these reactants and these products. And with combustion reactions, one of the key parts to the combustion reaction is seeing how much heat is either uh, absorbed or released. So let's go through a problem with this here. I have a candle. The candle uh, had an initial mass, I'll put initial mass of 125 grams. And then after being burned, it had a final mass of 100 grams. So with that said, it looks like 25 grams of candle was burned. So the mass burned was 125 grams. I want to know how much energy is released. Well, I know that for 25 grams, I have in terms of energy that's released, we'll just call it Q for right now, 1,075 uh, kilojoules, okay? If I want to set that up as a proportion, I can say, well, looks like there's a thousand, uh, seven, 1,075 kilojoules of energy released for 225 grams. How much would be released in one gram? and that leaves us our x, okay? And so when we solve it this way, we simply cross multiply, and we should get a solution that says 43 kilojoules per gram. Now scientists will use dimensional analysis. They will say, all right, I know that one gram of energy is what I'm looking for, in this case of paraffin, and I know that in my case, 25 grams release 1,075 kilojoules. And these, if I cancel them out, work out to be also 43 kilojoules per gram. So either way is possible of how you can solve that problem. You can either cross multiply. Um, eventually, we want to get you to the point where you are uh, doing dimensional analysis. So this is what we call the heat of combustion. So for paraffin, the heat of combustion is 43 kilojoules for every gram that is burned. Let's try one where we're working with molar heat of combustion. Molar heat of combustion is not looking at grams, but looking at moles. So just a quick review of moles. Remember that one mole is 5.0222 uh, particles of that substance, uh, times 10 to the 23rd particles of that substance. And we need to, in this case, know that um, molar mass which is our form of grams, equals one mole. And we can find the molar mass by looking at the periodic table. So in this case, I have 336 grams of C2H2, all right? I'm told that this is how much energy released for one mole, but my units right now are in grams, so I need to first do this conversion into moles. So I look at uh, my periodic table and as I look at my periodic table I recognize that if I add two C's which are both 12 uh, plus two H's which are both one on the periodic table add those together I have a molar mass of 28 grams C2H2 for every one mole of C2H2. So in that case, how many moles do I have if I do my calculations correctly? I should get 12 moles of C2H2.
So if I know that in this case, every one mole releases 1,256 kilojoules, how much would 12 moles release? Well, that's pretty straightforward. We have 12 times as much as that. If I do dimensional analysis, I now take this number. I make sure that I have the same units, uh, what units I have uh, in the numerator, I need to make sure to have in the denominator. Keep in mind that there's an invisible one over here. So one mole of C2H2 releases 1,256 kilojoules of energy. And when I do that calculation, I should receive a number oops, that is 15,070 kilojoules of energy. So for your homework, what I'd like you to do is I'm going to give you these problems. And I'd like you to work through them. Use the table on 3.9 to get um, the listings of what the heat of combustion is for these materials. So if it says molar heat of combustion, know that that's for one mole. If it says uh, grams of combustion, know that that's for one gram. All right? And see if you come up with similar numbers that I have. In class, we're going to practice changing those grams into moles. When you go into class, I'm going to give you one of those problems, and they'll tell me um, to do as a quiz, quote unquote quiz, and that shows me if you've done your homework or not. You'll notice I have the answers here just to help you see if you're on the right path.